This video is all about how to test your new laptop that you just bought to see if it's a good unit that you will be able to keep for many years or if you should look into the return policies of the retailer where you got it to see how you can get it exchanged or maybe return it right away because of quality control issues or that it's just not fitting the purposes why you bought it. I'm W2Best and I make in-depth gear reviews and tutorials and if you like this video it would be super nice if you want to put a like and maybe also subscribe to this channel. That gives me a ton of motivation to bring out new content moving forward and I have a pretty decent backlog of stuff so you don't want to miss out on the things that are to come. If you want to communicate with me you can do so either in the comment section below or on Instagram where I'm also at W2Best. Both for the purpose of my work and for the purpose of running this YouTube channel, I have been buying a lot of laptops the past few years. And one thing that I always do, the first thing when I get it and unbox it, is to just have a very in-depth look at all the different things to deem if this is a good unit or a less good unit. Because quality control is really bad usually between all the big laptop manufacturers. So basically what happens is that laptop manufacturers will ship out any kind of unit without properly checking if this lives up to some kind of quality expectations. And they do that because they expect you either to not realize this or they think that even if you realize this and you send this back, this is still a cheaper process than quality controlling everything and making sure that the ones that are relatively bad don't get sent out to customers. The first thing you want to have a closer look at is definitely the different quality control aspects. And here there are a few different areas that you want to cover. I've made a separate video about how to check your monitor on your laptop when you receive it. And I will link that in the description below so you can do these tests that I think is the very first thing you should do when you receive a new laptop. That basically means you should check your screen for dead pixels, IPS glow and backlight bleed. On top of that, you also want to make sure that you try out the max and minimum brightness and see that these are up to your standards. And you also want to make sure that the screen's colors are up to your standards. Even if you read this in specifications, it's something that can be pretty hard to know just from reading a specification. And you really want to check it out and see that the screen lives up to what you thought it would live up to. The next thing I would have a look at is the overall build quality of the laptop. And for example, you want to have a look at if there are any sharp edges around. The way you do that is just by feeling these edges here where the lid, the bottom lid, is connected to the top part of the chassis. You do that all around just to see if there is somewhere where this sort of lacks that kind of quality feel that you want, especially if you bought a premium laptop. After that you want to make sure that the hinge is stiff or not stiff depending on what you prefer in your machine. I really like when the hinge is not too stiff so you can lift the lid up with one finger or one hand and I really like the hinge to be stiff enough that if you touch it like this or if you are in a bumpy environment like a train that it still sort of stays in place enough and you can use that when you're working on a train or a plane. The next thing you want to check out in terms of build quality is if there's any keyboard flex. You do that by just pressing down pretty hard in the middle of the keyboard area. And then you see if you think that the keyboard is giving too much way when you're doing this. In this case, I think this Lenovo Yoga Slim 7 is doing a really good job with not flexing too much, even when I push down really hard. After that, you want to do a similar thing, but with the trackpad. So you want to make sure that the trackpad is not too flimsy and gets pushed down a lot when you're using the hard clicks. I also always listen for rattling noises when you're tapping the touchpad like this. Next up, a really important thing you want to do that some people might not be aware of is listen in for coil whine. I always do this when I receive new units and the way you do it is just turning the laptop on and then lean in and listen if there's any kind of disturbing noise when you put your ear close up to the computer. Now there is a bit of fan noise here but there is also a pretty big amount of coil wine. I think that noise is a little bit hard to describe but basically it's like a bit of a static noise. Sometimes it can be high pitched, sometimes a bit lower pitched 
But if you hear that kind of infrequent noise coming on and off when you're leaning in with your ear, that's definitely not a very good sign. And if you can hear that at normal use, I would immediately exchange the laptop because that's something that will not go away over the time that you're using the machine. In several laptops that I bought over the past years, I have had non-working webcams or microphones. And this is something that I always check immediately now because I've had several faulty units. So just flip on the built-in camera app and make sure that the camera and mic works the way that it's supposed to do. Last but not least, in terms of quality control, you want to check that all the ports work like they are supposed to. I have had a few issues with different machines, both with the USB ports and with the headphone microphone combo jack. And you want to make sure that all the ports work. So try the different USB-C ports, the different USB-A ports, try using the SD card reader if there is one, try the HDMI port, and try using headphones and microphones so that you know you won't run into an issue because of this at a later point. Outside of the quality control category here, there are a few other things that I really think you should do. Basically, one thing that is hard to know when you buy a laptop and you read the specifications is how much the fans will be on, both in a very light load or an idle state, and in some kind of max load. So what I like to do then is to just try and leave the laptop in a very light load or something like this where it's idle for some time and see if the fans are turning on and when they are turning on, if they do, how loud they actually sound. They have different pitches to them and you really need to see if you get disturbed by the idle fan noise because if you do, it's probably not going to be a laptop that you will be willing to use for a long period of time. Then you would like to download some kind of stress test. You can, for example, get Cinebench R20 or Cinebench R23. This is because you want to max out the performance of the laptop and see how hot it gets and how much the fans turn on during this kind of test that you're doing. I will put a link to Cinebench R23 down in the description below so that you can make a stress test of your new machine. If the laptop passes your quality control basic test, your fan noise test, both at idle and at load, then I think it's time to try it out under your specific use cases. If you want to watch movies in bed and you put it onto your duvet and that kind of blocks this part here that normally is used for cooling, you want to make sure even more that the laptop can stay cool enough while you're doing that. If you're using a specific software, like I'm using DaVinci Resolve for my video editing, I always need to install DaVinci Resolve and make sure that this is working fine with the machine that I'm testing. If you know some of your use cases require a very long battery time, you also want to make sure to see if this laptop is actually living up to your preferred kind of battery life. And this is something you can check out pretty quickly by using the laptop for a few days. But just make sure to try out all your different use cases in this first few days to see if this computer lives up to your expectations. Last but not least, in this kind of daily use test, I think you should use it with all the different peripherals that you normally use with your unit. So that means you want to use it with your keyboards, your mice, you want to use it with the kind of memory cards that you maybe use with the camera, maybe connect an eGPU if that's something you're into, connect it to your docking station in the office if you have one, or your other kind of monitor solutions and make sure that this is all working the way that it's supposed to. Because if there's something that is not working well here, this will just disturb you so much that you'll probably end up not using this or you'll have to change your whole sort of ecosystem around things just because you got one new unit that doesn't work with something that you're very used to having in your everyday life. If your laptop pass all of these different criteria that I've listed, then I think it's a good unit and something that you want to keep and keep on using for probably several years. But if it fails in one of these areas, you really want to make sure to check up what are the return policies of this company that you bought the laptop from. Usually you have at least two weeks of time where you can check out the unit and then if it doesn't meet your requirements or if there's something faulty with it, you can send it back to the manufacturer for a full refund. If you still want that machine, you can just return that unit get a different one and hope that this is a better unit that has less quality control issues. 
I have had three different units of Yoga Slim 7 and this guy is good but it has a little bit of a coil wine. I got it at a very cheap price so I still decided to keep it. My Yoga Slim 7 Pro is very nice in most areas but it has some trackpad rattling noise when you are doing this soft click. Because I don't use the trackpad that much, I am fine with this being the case. But if you use the trackpad all the time, maybe that's something that would prompt you to send that unit back to be able to get a better one. I mean, this is all a personal opinion. No one can tell you what kind of quality control issues you should be able to live with. Is there anything else that you normally check when you are getting a new laptop? Please share that down in the comment section below so we can have a discussion about what are the most important things in a new unit. I am super keen to see what you have to say about this topic, so please share anything that you think is relevant. I'm W2Best, I make in-depth gear reviews and tutorials, and I will see you in the next video. Have a nice day, bye bye.